Now, the government uh, today confirmed plans to put thousands of asylum seekers in disused military bases. The Immigration Minister, Robert Jenrick, uh, told the House of Commons today that migrants will be housed at former RAF sites. This is despite legal threats from local Conservatives. Uh, well, joining me now to discuss the government's proposed plans is Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper. Um, Ms Cooper, good to see you good here on Thank you so much for coming on to talk about this. Um, you made it clear that you said that you don't think this plan is workable. Why? I think the problem is that this announcement today is an admission of failure. These new plans are in addition to the costly hotel use. They don't cut hotel use. Uh, they're not an alternative. And the reason for all of that is because at the heart of this is the Home Office's failure to take decisions. Their asylum decision making has dropped by 40 per cent. And the shocking fact is that 98 per cent of the small boat arrivals last year haven't actually been decided. Unless they get a grip of their decision making, unless they clear the backlog, and we have set out proposals to do that with fast track decision making, but unless they do that, this problem is just going to keep getting worse. Yeah, you say these plans are in addition to, not instead of hotels, but Robert Jenrick himself admitted that, you know, they won't end the use of hotels overnight. This is just the start. Um, what do you make of the ethics of this? Because Robert Jenrick also said that, you know, the accommodation that they're going to provide for migrants, this new alternative accommodation, uh, things like RAF bases, should meet essential living standards and nothing more. The UK doesn't want to be a magnet for displaced people or those seeking better economic prospects. It will be very much a deterrent in the government's eyes. So what do you make of the ethics of what they're doing here? Well, I think the problem is that the government's lost a, a grip of the whole thing. So they're not taking the proper action that we need and that we've called for to go after the criminal gangs and to stop dangerous crossings in the first place. And they voted against that, in fact, yesterday. They're also not taking the action that we need to clear the backlog and make sure that you've got fast decision making so that you don't have so many people in this really costly hotel accommodation. We do think ministers should have been working with local councils councils for years on better value, lower cost and more appropriate asylum accommodation. But frankly, they didn't do that. And that's why they ended up with this panic buying of hotel <sighs> accommodation. And that is going to continue under these plans. And that's the really important thing, because, you know, all of the flim flam and all of the headlines and, and all of the stuff about barges that don't exist, we've had it time and time again from this government. You get yeah. the headlines. And then when you look at the detail underneath it, actually what it means is just carrying on with the same failed system. They're not changing it, they're not replacing it, they're carrying on with the same problems that we've got at the moment. And that means you end up with this huge long backlog with continuing boats mm. arriving, putting lives at risk and also undermining our border security. That's why Labour set out an alternative plan. Yeah, um, the Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick did say that there would be new funding uh, for local authorities to help with this. Uh, let's cut, as you put it, the flim flam and talk about Labour's alternative plans. It is a mess. Someone's going to have to clean it up. It might be on, it might fall to Labour. Um, how would you do it? What, tell us how you would do that. What is the alternative plan? What's different from what the government are proposing? Well, Labour set out a five-point plan to prevent these dangerous boat crossings that are undermining our border security and also putting lives at risk as well. First, we have to go after the criminal gangs with a new cross-border police unit. Secondly, you have to get a new agreement with France on both returns and things like family reunion. We've also got to clear the backlog. We would have a fast-track system for safe countries like Albania, fast-tracking decisions and returns. Mm. Fourthly, you've got to have a reform of resettlement schemes which are not preventing people being exploited and then finally you have to target some of the crises and some of the problems mm. at heart in the region uh, and support refugees in the region as well. That's the bigger picture isn't it? Let's talk about the practicalities of the situation mm. because you know it's estimated there are 51,000 people in hotels currently in around 395, 400 hotels. Um, Surely moving them to cheaper accommodation is a good thing. On that practical issue of housing these people more cost-effectively, what would Labour do? 
Well, we want to end hotel use. The, the fastest way of that, to do that is to clear the backlog, and we've set out proposals for a fast-track asylum decision-making. But how fast? It's not going to be overnight. Moment. I'm trying to think of where these people are going to go. If we're spending sure. £6.2 Let million pounds a day on hotels, where would they go? Sure. Let me finish the point. So okay. the first thing is you have to clear the backlog because if you don't, this is just sticking plasters and it's going to get worse and worse. And if you fast-track cases, for particularly for safe countries like Albania, the government's still refusing to do that. 12,000 people arrived from Albania last year and those cases, only 1% of those cases are being decided. So clear those cases really quickly and get proper decisions, proper returns and so on in place. Then secondly, we should have, the government should be working with local councils to properly plan cheaper, uh, less costly, more appropriate um, accommodation and not have have this costly hotel use. So we are very clear that you need to end the hotel use because it is inappropriate. And an independent report came out just today showing that the Home Office has completely failed to manage okay. any of those contracts. In fact, it's actually the Home Office, bits of the Home Office have been competing with each other to push those hotel okay. costs I, up. I am, I am going to push you on the accommodation point because you are pushing back on the government really hard on this. As I said, estimated £6.2 million a day. You can move the backlog as fast as you like. It might still take a couple of weeks. That's running into the, the tens of millions. If it's not a hotel, if it's not a disused RAF barracks or a ferry, what is it for Labour? What is that cheaper accommodation that local authorities are going to come up with? So they should be working on alternative sites, and there may be all kinds of sites that are appropriate, but the moment the government's not doing that, they're not working with local councils on have it. Have you been talking to and local also, councils? And also, but be clear, but be clear, and we have, yes, we have yeah. heard from different councils who have different views on what sort of approach is appropriate, but I would also say that the government is not moving people out of hotels. This is a myth. The, ha homes, the immigration minister had to admit that today. He's not moving people out of hotels. Hotels. This is all in addition to hotels because they're failing to clear the backlog. But maybe they're so not moving them out of hotels be because of this, hotels. this other accommodation that you keep talking about, you can't, you can't name me anything. And it's, you know, sorry to keep but pushing not, you, but. but yeah, so I know. Pushing you, but, but I think keep pushing it is really important to get because there is, a, there is a con at where? the heart of what the government is doing. So we think the council should be working together. But bear in mind, look, there's currently tens of thousands of long-standing asylum accommodation places in this country, places that have been in existence for very many years and are all over the country as well. But the government can't use any of those asylum places because the people who are currently in them have been waiting for years for a decision. So we should be using those long-standing asylum accommodation places because, of course, you need asylum accommodation for people, but that long-standing accommodation is much cheaper, spread in different places around the country, and the government can't use it because they're not taking decisions. And that's why it all comes back to get the government to take decisions, take them fast, do the fast tracking, and actually get this problem sorted out. Get a grip and also go after the criminal gangs who are causing a lot of these problems in the first place. So you actually prevent the dangerous crossings in the first place by working with France and going after the gangs. Final question, Yvette Cooper. Um, you're very passionate about this. Is your leader, Sir Keir Starmer, as passionate? Because, you know, tackling small boats wasn't even on his um, five-point mission statement uh, that he came out with a few weeks ago. You know, he, there could be the accusation that, you know, Labour is soft on migrants because it wasn't one of his priorities, it seemed. Well, Keir Starmer said very clearly, you have to have proper border security. Border security, national security and economic stability. Those are the things, the foundations on which everything else is built. So that's why we have to protect our border security. And I think that is what most people want. And they also want a properly controlled and managed asylum and refugee system so that the UK does our bit alongside other countries to help those who have fled persecution and conflict. At the moment, we haven't got either of those things. We haven't got proper border security because they're not going after the criminal gangs and we certainly haven't got a properly managed uh, asylum and refugee system because that is in chaos because they're just not getting a grip. Yvette Cooper, Shadow Home Secretary, uh, good to have you on the programme this afternoon. Thank you for your time. Thank you.